to chapter five, um, talking about triangle congruence. We're going to start off with uh, section 5.1, which is angles of triangles. All right, so let's talk about how we classify triangles to start with. So we classify triangles in two ways. We classify them by their sides, and we classify them by their angles. So let's talk about sides first. So we're going to start off triangles classified by sides. The first one we have is called a scalene triangle. The key here is that the triangle has no congruent sides, no sides that are equal in length. The second one we have is called an isosceles triangle. An isosceles triangle is a triangle with a pair of congruent sides. So notice here we have those two sides that would be equal. And then we have the equilateral triangle, which tells me that all of the sides are congruent. So they all have one tick mark on it, okay? So we have scalene, no congruent sides. We have isosceles, two congruent sides. And then we have equilateral where all three sides are congruent. And that is how we classify it by the sides. The second one we have is we have by angles. So an acute angle or acute triangle is where all of the angles of the triangle are acute angles, meaning that they measure between zero and 90 degrees. They cannot be zero and they cannot be 90 degrees. That's what an acute angle is. We have an obtuse triangle. An obtuse triangle is a triangle with an obtuse angle. So remember, your obtuse angle means that it is from 90 to 180. It does not equal 90 and it does not equal 180. Now, when we look at that, we should be able to recognize this, but just a, a thought here. When we say it has an obtuse angle, that means it can only have one obtuse angle, okay? The other two would have to be acute. So we'll talk about why here in a second. We have equal angular triangles where the triangles have all congruent angles. So all of the angles are congruent here, and you'll notice those are marked with the um, arc symbol. And then we have a right triangle, which is a triangle with a single right angle. And remember, that means that it is exactly 90 degrees, okay? The other two, again, on these would also be acute just like on the obtuse triangle, the other two would be acute. Okay, now why is that? Well, here's the reason. We have this theorem in mathematics that says the triangle sum theorem, it's called, is what it's called, and the angle measure in a triangle always adds up to 180 degrees. So if you have a triangle, that all three angles together have a sum of 180 degrees. So now if we kind of go back to this, why would there only be one obtuse angle in a triangle? Well, because that angle itself is greater than 90 degrees. So there is only 90 degrees left or less, less than 90 degrees for the other two triangles, which would make them both acute. Same thing with a right triangle. You only have one right angle because the right angle takes up 90 degrees of that. You have exactly 90 degrees left to split between the other two angles. Now, do not assume that just because it has a right angle, the other angles are 45. That is not always the case. You can have a 20 degree and a 70 degree for the other two. They do have to be acute angles, but they do not have to be congruent angles. Okay, so triangle sum theorem. All the angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. Okay, so let's practice that. So if we look here at this first one, I start off, I have an angle that's 62, I have an angle that's 87, and I have X. I have this X degrees, and together those are going to add up to 180 degrees. I'm going to combine my like terms here. So that's 149 plus X equals 180. 
At that, now I'm going to subtract the 149 from both sides, and that is going to end up giving me 31 degrees for the value of x. Over here on the second one, here's what I know. I know this is a right angle, and since it is a right angle, then that means that it has to equal 90 degrees. So here's what I know. I know x plus 2x plus 24 plus the 90 equals 180 degrees. We're going to get the 90 out of there right away, so I'm going to subtract 90 degrees. So that's going to leave me with the other parts. I'm going to take these two and add them together. They're like terms. So that would give me 3x plus 24 is equal to 90 degrees. Now at this point, I'm going to minus my 24, and that's going to leave me with 3x is equal to 66. I'm going to divide by 3, so x is equal to 22. Now we take that, if I want to find the two angles then, I know this one is 22 degrees because it's just x. On the second one, though, I need to do a little bit of math to it. I'm going to go 2 times 22 added to 24, so that would get me 44 plus 24, which would get me 68 degrees for this angle. Now, last thing to do is if you want to just double check yourself, if you add those up, they better equal 180 because that's what the triangle sum theorem tells us. Okay, next we're going to talk about some different types of angles. You maybe have seen these before, you might not have. So we have a different type of angle. We have what is called an interior angle, and an interior angle is exactly what it sounds like. It is inside, interior is inside the triangle, so interior angles are angles inside of the triangle, whereas exterior angles are angles that are linear pairs with the interior angles. In other words, they are angles on the outside if the side of the triangle is extended. So you'll notice here, you have this angle here, this one here, this one here. Uh, those would be exterior angles, okay? So we also have this other type of name that we give these. We look here, we have the exterior angle here, and it will have what is called two remote interior angles. So that would be two and one. Okay, so it is going to be opposite of that angle to the other side, and those are your remote interiors, okay? Let's try one more. If I just drew it real quick, if I extended this one out, and then let's try this one. And I have angle one, two, three, and let's just call this angle five. So angle five would be my exterior. And then we look for which would be the remote interiors, and that would be angle one. That would be our angle one, and our angle three would be the remote interior angles to angle five. Okay, so, so we have an exterior angle, and we have remote interiors based off of that angle, where it's located at. That brings us to the exterior angle theorem then. The exterior angle theorem simply says an exterior angle is equal to, key, is equal to the sum of its remote interior angles. In other words, that means that, hey, when we add these together, that's what it's going to equal. So in this diagram, I have my exterior angle here. And it is equal to the sum of the remote interior angles. So angle 1 plus angle 2 is equal to angle 4. Now, you might ask yourself, why is that? Well, if you think about this, I'm going to give it to you in a two-statement base. We know that the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3 equals 180. We also know that the measure of angle 3 and the measure of angle 4 equals 180 because those are a linear 
pair. And the first one is because of the triangle sum theorem. Then, if we look at that, we could substitute that now and say measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 3 has to then equal the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 4 because they're both equal to 180. If we subtract out our measure of angle 3 from both sides then, you will notice what statement you end with. Measure of angle 1 plus measure of angle 2 has to equal the measure of angle 4. And the reason being is because those are remote interior angles to the exterior angle of angle 4. Okay, so how do we use this? Well, we use exactly that. We go in and we use our, G, our algebra to be able to solve for our missing values. So what do I know in this picture? I know this is my exterior, and I know these two are my remote interiors. So what I know then is I know that x plus 80 is equal to 3x minus 22. So now we're going to move our x's to the same side. So I'm going to minus my x from both sides. And that's going to get me 80 is equal to 2x minus 22. I'm then going to add 22 to both sides. So that would get me 102 equals 2x. Divide that by 2 and I'm going to end up with x being 51. So now I know this angle to be 51 degrees. If I want to find this one, I just have to do a little math. 3 times 51 minus the 22. 3 times 51, that's going to give me 153 minus the 22, and that's going to give me 131 degrees for this exterior angle. And that is how we use that remote interior angle theorem along with the exterior angles to find missing values. And that is how we look at the angle relationships inside of a triangle.